Well, good afternoon, and what a pleasure it is to stand before you today and report on the city's accomplishments for 2012 and the challenges that ZT gets his phone figured out. And the challenges ahead for us in 2013. And uh, thanks again to President Perry Turwell, my fellow Exchange Club members for hosting the State of the City Address each year. As I have said many times, the uh, Quincy Exchange Club, which I've now been a member of for almost 30 years, uh, is a shining example of what unity for service means. By the way, that's our motto in case you um, You know, what an honor and a privilege it is to serve as Quincy's mayor. Uh, thank you for the confidence you've shown in me and my administration. Uh, when we started this journey back in 2005, we talked about keeping our community moving forward. I believe you will see today that we have done just that. As mayor, I know that successes in the city are not based on one person, uh, even though most everyone seems to believe the mayor has all the answers. Trust me, yesterday and today, I'm supposed to have all the answers. I've had some uh, interesting phone calls, to say the least. Most people are very kind and uh, very accommodating when you give them the facts. Some don't care about the facts. Uh, but that's part of the job. Uh, but this rather reflects the unity and the strengths of our entire uh, city council, our city employees, and you, the citizens. As you know, I'm going to introduce uh, my folks back here in a minute, but Alderman Brink, who, of course, is a member. Uh, Alderman Moore, who's a member, and I see Alderman Hammermill is here today. So they're a part of this as well. And it, it really is a privilege to present uh, these accomplishments today on behalf of all of them. Thanks again to our IT department, uh, Jim Murphy, our director, our assistant, uh, Corey Dean from the city's information technology uh, department. Uh, they're here today to video my comments. Uh, to We will rebroadcast this on channel 15 and on our city website. And that's www.quincyil.gov in case you want to get a final look at it before you go to bed tonight. So, yeah. Speaking of technology, uh, I'm happy to announce we are just about to unveil our new city website. Uh, this will probably occur next month. Uh, we've been working the last couple of years getting ready for this new rollout. Uh, I believe when you see it, you're going to be impressed, and you'll see that it's user-friendly, and it's really going to help our efforts. Uh, we've been you know, involved with websites for a number of years. Jim and his staff do a great job. Uh, we keep it in-house, and uh, this, this is going to be a good venture for us. You know, if we stay uh, with tech for a moment, let me also make a comment on how our aldermen are doing uh, since we moved them away from about 75% of the paper that we were giving them uh, to use now the uh, city-issued iPad. All 14 of them have one, and all 14 of them, quite frankly, are doing quite well. Um, you know, there's variation in age, there's variation in education and experience with that group. But they all have embraced this. And again, uh, various people from IT have helped. Uh, various department heads uh, have helped. Uh, but I think they're, they're doing a good job with it. And the idea was, as Jim uh, can tell you, uh, when I first was elected, I really felt like technology wasn't being used like it should be used for the city. And matter of fact, no disrespect to the former mayor, he didn't even use a computer. I had used a computer for almost 30 years ago. So we have really moved in that direction. And now having our aldermen uh, with those iPads, and I think the three that are here can attest to this, uh, it's really produced uh, more productivity for the council members. It's a good way for them to communicate, stay on top of issues in their wards. Uh, you know, we've got a new application that's being uh, tested right now that will enhance things even better because we're going to have an app on there that will address uh, ward issues instantaneously. Uh, several aldermen are working with this now. I want to also acknowledge uh, Dan Brink, who's here, Mike Farr, and Steve Deesterhouse, who really have helped bring technology to the council. Uh, they were at the forefront of this. They worked through the process. We let them experiment with the pads first, and uh, they've done a terrific job. And I, I'm very appreciative, and I know Dan's here, and I mean that sincerely. Because it's not an easy thing. Uh, as I said, we have some variations in ages, and you know, it's hard sometimes when you've never had technology before. But I do believe this is going to make a huge difference. It's already paying big, big dividends, I believe, for us. 
Well, let me also thank city department heads. Uh, many of them are here today. Some could not be simply because of the storm. Uh, they, they are here today to hear the address, but most importantly, they're here because uh, they're people that I work with, they're people that I admire, and I treasure uh, their input and their knowledge that they bring to the city and the help that they give me. You know, it is truly a pleasure to work with these fine professionals that give 100% every day they work for us. Let me do some introductions. I'm hoping I don't miss anybody. I may say somebody that's not here uh, from my previous notes that couldn't get here, but I'm going to introduce them nonetheless. Uh, our director of planning, Chuck Bellheimer, is here. Our HR director, Doug Olson, is here. City engineer slash airport interim director, Jeff Steinkamp, is here. Our city clerk, Jenny Hayden, is here. Uh, information technology, I introduced Jim Murphy and Corey Dean, they're both here. Fire Chief Joe Henney is of course here uh, as a member. Um, our uh, Executive Director of the Quincy Public Library, Nancy Dolan is here. And Chuck and I were talking about maybe a field trip to the uh, library for the Exchange Club. You'd be amazed at all the improvements that have taken place down there since uh, they went through the renovations. Our City Treasurer, Peggy Krim, is here. Uh, Pete Hoshlaw couldn't be here with us. Pete is, you know, with the crews. He's, that's who I was with last night till about 2 o'clock in the morning. So, and they worked till 7 this morning, so I wasn't sure he'd make it today. Um, Rob Copley, our police chief, of course, is here. His uh, two deputy chiefs, Eric Kelty and Dennis Bingheim, are both here. Uh, I don't see, I was looking for Greg Dreyer, but I don't see our assistant chief, uh, Greg Dreyer, from the fire department. Brian Cook from our engineering department. And, of course, I mentioned the alderman. Think. Is that there's anybody I missed, folks? I don't think so. Well, there again, they do a great job, and it's it's really always an honor for me to uh, to work with them each and every day. You know, I think for the first time you got a kick out of this because I wrote this talk a few days ago and finished it and put it away until now. Um, anyway, I think for the first time in a number of years, I don't have to start off with how the city survived another disaster. <laughs> Guess what? I should have rewrote that, right? But I'm going to read it how I, I put it. Uh, no floods, no blizzards. Yeah, we had one. Uh, no straight line winds destroying over 2,000 trees in our tree city, USA. And wait a minute. You know, we did have the worst drought, and we're still experiencing that since the Dust Bowl days. And we're still dealing with the worst and most challenging economy since the Depression of 1929. I guess we are still dealing with some major issues. You know, in my opinion, the biggest accomplishment is how the city has handled its finances and made sure our community is safe for all of us, including our visitors each day in the Gem City. Since it's impossible to cover everything that took place in the past year and what lies ahead for us, and I recently have spoke to groups, and I see Travis sitting here, with the tourism groups and the art groups, Travis and I both spoke. So I thought I would deviate from that a little bit, concentrate in some other areas. Um, so I'm going to focus today on maybe six key areas. The economy, jobs, city finances, and infrastructure, transportation, and the critical need for good education and providing a safe community. And then I'll talk a little bit about the challenges that we see Again, 2013. Quincy, unlike many cities in our state, is not struggling to stay in business, while many are. There are over 1,200 cities in our state, and many of them are facing terrible financial situations. Uh, many of them, quite frankly, and I've heard this from more than one mayor, are ready to take their keys to City Hall and give them to the General Assembly or to the governor. Um, that's why our theme this past few years with the Illinois Municipal League, which we've been members forever, and I happen to be an officer, uh, is save our cities. Uh, Quincy has had eight years of balanced budgets. Seven of eight years, we've lowered the tax rate for our community. And we still have provided all the basic city services that all of you expect. Quincy is obviously moving in the right direction. Why? How did we do this? Well, we did it like most all of you in this room. We reduced our expenses. Budget reductions make for cost savings. Let me mention just a few of the measures we have taken to keep our city government more responsible. First of all, we had an ordinance that we drafted, and there was support, and Dan, again, sitting here, uh, was a big part of that. 
We have a $711,000 budget reduction through an ordinance, which reduced all of our line items, and that helped us immensely. Um, we have $190,000 that we saved from the furlough days that our employees uh, took. Uh, we now require any expenditure over $500 to have prior approval. Uh, it was a little bit higher than that before, but that, that also has allowed us to keep a watchful eye. Uh, we eliminated, believe it or not, literally hundreds of phone lines that really were of no value to the city and they weren't being used. Um, that was a big, big plus for us. Uh, we, we have placed a high priority on energy conservation for all of our technology equipment. Uh, we are driven by technology these days, and that's very much apparent in our police cars, our fire trucks, uh, our engineering department, all of us uh, are driven by technology. Uh, we reduced our staff in the clerical area by six. Uh, we still have not replaced, and I know they're both sitting here and they're tired of hearing me say this, but we still don't have a full-time director of central services, and we don't have a full director of our uh, airport. Uh, so Jeff and Marty have continued to carry the torch for both those that have done an incredible job doing that, and it's not easy. Um, you know, the airport has a lot of FAA regulations that we have to follow through with. Marty, with transit and with central services, uh, you know, it's a, big, it's a big burden, but they're doing a terrific job. But that's about a $380,000 annual cost savings. Uh, our early retirement initiative, you know, that was set forth about three years ago now, and uh, the object was to see people take advantage. We had 22 that took advantage. We did replace one of those positions with a police officer, but uh, that was scheduled to save us $5.2 million in four years. I'm happy to say that into the third year currently, were over four million in savings. Uh, we realigned, realigned our fire department. Uh, we, we bought the two new pieces of equipment. Uh, Chief Henny allowed us to reposition some of the supervisory positions, uh, and that we're working through. Again, that's cost savings to, to the city and to the taxpayers. And our full-time workforce has gone from 348 to 315. Most of those reductions have occurred in our central services area and our clerical areas. Uh, but we are getting by, and we're getting by still providing all these good services to our residents. You know, I could go on with more details, but let me just say I'm proud of how all of our department heads have worked hard to slim down our expenses. I know what a challenge it has been for all of them to provide great city services while operating like it's 2009. Uh, an example of that is this past 24 hours. Um, those guys are white, um, but they're continuing to work hard. Uh, we just don't have the extra bodies that we used to have. And for good reason, we can't afford to do that. You know, with the uncertainty of the state of Illinois, I don't need to tell you, you know, how uncertain that is, and with our country, uh, I'm proud to say that we still have survived and that we have monies in reserve, that we have a reserve fund on top of all these savings that we, we have made. Uh, and one last thing about this, um, just to show you how difficult it can be with the state, I think most of you know that we share in state revenues, and those are monies that are earned here. We refer to those, you'll hear me say this uh, throughout my presentation a few times, local government distributed fund, LDTF. Uh, there is a bill, there's a bill in the Senate, there's a bill in the House. The, the Senate bill is 622, and the House bill is 193. And I've been tracking this, and I've actually been over to Springfield, not to testify yet, but to work with the municipal group because we are opposed to this bill. And what this bill is designed to do, and it's out of committee, uh, it is designed to take money from our local sales tax revenues from the cities. The purpose is to fund the state medical examiner's office. Now, here's the problem they have. They rob the funds out of that department. And what that department is, is the examiners that determine when a resident, when a doctor gets to residency, he has to have state uh, you know, registration. Usually it takes about two weeks. Right now it's project projected to take six months. So that really hurts getting doctors on board in these hospitals, these clinics. So to alleviate that problem, they thought, well, gee, we'll just take sales tax revenue from our cities. The idea was to borrow the money and pay it back in three years. So I don't know. It seems to have a lot of, lot of motion, uh, a lot of legs. So that's something we'll have to deal with. 
During the past year, I've traveled to Springfield to testify against proposals that would deviate revenues from the cities, uh, particularly our local government distributor fund. You know, if, if they could look at other ways to reduce their expenses, maybe they wouldn't have to go after some of the shared revenues. We're not in it alone, all the cities, even the larger cities. There's a calculator that we look at almost on a daily basis is to determine how far behind we are in revenues that we have earned. You know, mayors today have to be on the front lines of this fight. Today, more than ever, a collaborative effort is necessary to protect municipal revenues. Again, I want to thank Dan. It sounds like I'm trying to get something out of Dan. I'm really not. Dan has been wonderful. Dan went with me to Springfield. And Dan, I think, saw firsthand uh, what it is that people like me have to do today as mayor to make sure that we don't lose these revenues. Uh, but I will continue to go to the Capitol. You have to uh, if you want to make sure that this funding stays in place. One of the other funds that they've already uh, you know, used, and it doesn't look like the sunset will occur now, is the PPRT money. So that's the personal property replacement tax funds. Those are corporate monies. Those are earned by your corporate entities. And again, those are earned by, the, they're, they're paid in by our corporate entities here in Quincy. So those monies allow us to you know, perform general um, tasks in our city. They go into our general fund. And those are, some of those have already been taken to pay for regional superintendents. And again, it was supposed to be a sunset. It doesn't look like that's going to occur. You know right now, and I just checked this this morning, it'll be, there'll be a few more. You know there's 5,100 bills that have been introduced today for the spring session. 5,100 bills. The Senate is done introducing bills. The House has a few more days. That's why sometimes it's mind-boggling, I think, for Senator Sullivan and Representative Tracy uh, to be on top of all those issues. What I need to be on top of, what the, the league needs to be on top of, is those that pertain to our cities, that pertain to St. Quincy, Illinois. So we want to protect that. Speaking of protecting, uh, let me shift gears for a moment here and go to our other top priority that I mentioned in my opening, and that is public safety. You know, protect and serve. Uh, the Quincy Fire Department, the Quincy Police Department work every second of the day to make our city safe. Look at what happened earlier this week. It was a very tense situation that could have gone extremely bad, but it didn't because our Quincy Police Department Chief, Rob Copley, under his direction, he was able to handle the situation with his department. They did a wonderful job. Um, you know, those are not easy situations. I stopped by there a couple times just to see how things were going, not to get in the way, never want to get in the way. Um, but it's tough. That was a, a long, long standoff, maybe the longest that, that Chief Goldie has ever had to deal with, but they did a great job because they're trained and able to do this. Uh, you know, people would have to be living under a rock these days to not visually see the many physical changes that have taken place in all the corners of the city. When you drive through the city of Quincy today, you see a tremendous change in the physical landscape. Starting at the bridge and working your way east, north, or south, you see those changes all the way to 64th Street. Uh, don't you have to pinch yourself some, sometimes if you're a long timer here uh, and see what has taken place and how things have changed? You know, I know my 39 years of living here, it's been amazing what has changed. Uh, whether it's the downtown, the Croc Center now with the facility that's uh, receiving over a thousand people every day, a uh, $70 million patient tower that uh, is in process under construction at Blessing Hospital, the major construction of the Good Samaritan home on the city's south side, Continuing improvements to Quincy University's campus, like the new County Neiman Performing Arts Center that's almost completed. And then you travel Broadway and you see all these new venues, uh, one of which is the anticipation has been mounting for some time, Texas Roadhouse. Um, and it's about to open uh, starting this weekend. Uh, all of this makes public safety a top priority. Uh, we are proud that our population in the city increased for the second time. But do you realize that on any given day, the population in our city limits swells to over 60,000 because we are the regional hub for commerce, for medicine, for education, for manufacturing, for trucking. That puts more pressure on our police and our fire departments. That's why having well-trained professionals is so important. Chief Copley, Chief Henning had terrific public safety for all of us. 
mix in all of the other essential services, like central services, as you witnessed here in the last 24 hours, utilities, transit, airport, engineering, planning, legal purchasing, uh, and purchasing, uh, legal department, human resources, uh, our IT department, our comptroller, our city clerk, and our city treasurer, they make our city work, and it works well because of them. Our library, our free public library, uh, you just can't say enough about what we have to offer here. But all of these departments, all of these people, along with our city officials, make things work. Our economy, jobs and employment are definitely improving. Uh, we've seen an expanding job market in manufacturing, in industries, and in retail, and healthcare. In today's world, we must be innovative and entrepreneurial in everything we do, especially economic development. Our employment numbers are the second best in the state for our county. But we have to stay focused on attracting higher paying jobs. Jobs that will keep our best and our brightest in Quincy or allow them to return to Quincy. We need more Prince Agris, Fitzpatrick Brothers, Napi Manufacturing, Trinity uh, Industries, Titan International, Hollister Whitney. Uh, those are just some that have continued to see increases in employment through these very <coughs> difficult times. In many instances, they did have layoffs, but they've called their workers back or they've hired additional, uh, which is terrific. Two of the other big pieces, the Gardner Denver and the Harris. Uh, as you know, Gardner Denver was in the news again today. Uh, there was a $3.7 billion bid for the Gardner Denver operation uh, by KKR. That's uh, Kohlberg uh, Kravis Roberts. That's an equity uh, firm, private equity firm. You know, our message, and I think my message as mayor is simple. Uh, it's one of support for the Gardner Denver management, both locally and management out in Pennsylvania. And of course, with the history of Gardner Denver, we hope that the partnership will continue. Uh, I've had an opportunity to talk to Michael Larson, who is the CEO, uh, on several occasions through this whole ordeal. Uh, he continues to praise the efforts of our local Gardner Denver folks here. And I still think that some good will definitely happen with this. If you talk to local management here, they have never been opposed to another company uh, buying uh, the Gardner Denver you know, company and using that name. So we will stay on top of that. Phil Conover, as most of you know, is the interim director for Greta right now. And Phil has made numerous calls. Phil and I have made a number of calls together uh, in this regard. Harris Corporation, as you know, the, the Gores Group back in December uh, did purchase Harris. It's in its final stages of being okay, but uh, in talking to Chris Parsons, who some of you might remember was the gentleman that came here when we dedicated uh, the 9-11 uh, artifact in front of City Hall. Uh, he's kept me informed throughout the process. We think this is a real plus uh, for Harris, and this broadcast division is something that the Lord's Group really was looking for. So those, we hope, will be positive things. But through the efforts of Greta and John Wood Community College and our manufacturing sector, uh, we are building a work with the technological skills to excel in the 21st century. Working with our educational partners and our school system, both public and private, it's helping our young people realize there is a future in manufacturing uh, today, more so than ever. Uh, you know, the U.S. employers will have 47 million job openings between 2010 and 2018, 30 million of which will require some form of post-secondary education and 14 million of those job openings will be the middle skill category, requiring either an associate's degree or an industry credential. And the skill gap is most acutely felt today in science, <coughs> technology, engineering, and math. Those are the areas that you don't see young people going into. And you don't see sometimes our educational institutions pushing those subjects. As a former science teacher, I can attest to the fact that things have changed. The key here is that we want to make sure in this partnership that that can help us into the 21st century and that jobs and manufacturing and healthcare and information technology, they are going to be there and these young people will be trained for them. Uh, 
this along with workforce programs. Uh, many of you know Blanche Shoup, who uh, you know, works in that area. I've worked with her. Uh, is there to retrain and train the workforce. Uh, as people are let go of positions, we try to get to them immediately and provide retraining opportunities, whether through John Wood or Spoon River, uh, through all the other entities in this nine county area. Remember this, <clears throat> if you wanna make a healthy community, you gotta rely upon business. Business makes a healthy community. And more importantly, healthy companies create jobs. Not politicians, <coughs> healthy companies create jobs. That's why the city investing in economic development through our economic partner, the Great River Economic Development Foundation, needs to be a priority. Today, retention of businesses is as important as growth. With all the challenges we face with the state, it is very tempting for our local employers to look elsewhere. And we've had a few do that. Um, but all of this only works if our school and educational partners are given the tools and resources to educate and motivate our youth. As I always tell students when I meet with them in their classes, you aren't our future, you are our present. And therefore, we have to give them the direction for where they can succeed. Now, Jack Purnell was supposed to be with us today. He was unable to be, but I wanna make a comment. You know, they, we had Jack Purnell Day here a couple weeks ago. He came back to Notre Dame, they asked me to come out put a proclamation together declaring it uh, Jack Cornell Day in the city of Quincy. But what I was most struck with, and there's a few of you in the room here that were there that day, Jack Cornell didn't talk about uh, the Baltimore Ravens and the Super Bowl champs. He didn't talk about the University of Illinois. He talked about his education that he received here in Quincy, and, and most of it at QND, and he mentioned individual teachers, that if it hadn't been for them, he wouldn't have had the skill set to go to the University of Illinois, let alone accomplish what he's accomplished. That's what I'm talking about. That's what we've got to get through to our educators, which we've got a great public school system here. I am a good parochial and private school system, but that's the key, because that isn't the future, that's the present. We've got to keep those kids away from Chief Copley and his group and make them more productive. Um, let's shift gears a minute. How about our infrastructure? Well, you know, there is so much I could talk about, like water line breaks, maybe bad smelling and tasting tap water. Um, hopefully the river levels and tons of powdered carbon have corrected this at your house <coughs> and your business. Uh, the drought has really been a problem, not just for the ag community, but for the cities like Quincy that take the water from the river. And yet, we have had an unusual amount of water line breaks because the ground is so dry. A few weeks ago, I don't know if you remember, we had a gas leak out on Broadway. We had to shut down Broadway. Uh, Amron arrived, we shut down Broadway 30th all the way back to about 25th Street. And I went out there, of course, and when I got out of my car and walked up to talk to the Amron guys, and they were still looking to determine where this leak was occurring, but they had several holes already in the middle of Broadway. And those holes were probably six, seven, eight foot deep. Um, and I looked in there and it was powdered. It was just powdered ground. Uh, it, it showed that the drought, when they say we're 19 inches below, uh, that it's even further than that. Now I think the recent rains, obviously the snowfall is gonna help us, but those are issues that we have never had to deal with the magnitude that we're dealing with them now. But we've accomplished a lot at the same time. We're just about to put our new high power generator online for our water treatment facility along the riverfront. Uh, thanks to the Community Development Block Grant Program under the Recovery Disaster Division, uh, this generator has become a reality for the city. Uh, no more worry about power during floods and no need to have a generator on standby costing us $1,000 a day. Uh, thanks to Congress for continuing the CDBG. You know, there was an effort to eliminate that, but this is the building block, and Chuck can tell you this, for all of our municipalities, is that that community development block grant is so important, and we qualify for that because of the size of our city. 